What's up everybody, Mr. Toolbox back. In this video, there will be block rocking beats because we are going to tackle ambient audio. You'll notice I don't have the Lumberyard editor open. That's because to get this stuff working, we're gonna have to take a detour into WYs. Now I'll admit this was sort of foreign territory for me, so it took a couple hours of bashing my head against the wall to get everything wired up, hoping I can save you the same frustration. I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed with the documentation on the audio front. It seems like whoever wrote them kind of made some assumptions about what I did and didn't know. And as a one-man band, there were a lot of things that I was just kind of unfamiliar with. Uh, some of the documentation seems plain wrong. So I'll point that out as we go, but let's get started. So go ahead, launch WYS. It incidentally stands for WaveWorks Interactive Sound Engine. Um, if it's your first time launching it, you'll be presented with the EULA. Go ahead and read it if you're bored. Click accept when you're ready to. The documentation is then going to tell you to click new in the project launcher to create a new project. I don't think that's the right thing to do. What I suggest instead is click open other and then go ahead and browse to your lumberyard installation. Mine is in program files, lumberyard 1.4 dev. Find the project that you're working with. I'm going to assume for this video that you're working with the samples project. So click that, <clears throat> go to sounds, and then the WYS project folder, you'll find a WProj file. It's right down here. Click that, click open. That'll level set us with some already built uh, ambient sounds, things like that, and we'll work with that for now. So we can touch all the moving pieces here in WYS. We don't want to use anything that's included by default, so we're going to need a new sound. I grabbed a violin excerpt of a, a Bach piece. I will throw an annotation on screen and also throw the link down in the description below. But go ahead, download that, and then we'll have it on hand to work with. Before we can work with our audio file, we'll need to import it into the project. So to do that, we'll click Project, click Import Audio Files. In the Audio File Importer, click Add Files. I downloaded mine to my desktop. It's this A file right here. So I'll click that and click open. You'll see it here. Go ahead and click import again. And there we have our new file. A few changes we'll want to make to this audio file now that it's imported. Uh, the first is to change the default volume. So underneath this voice slider, we'll click in this box and we'll set that to negative 13 press enter, we'll see that slider come down. The next is to change the loop parameters. So over on the right hand side here, we're going to tick loop and leave it on infinite. The last is going to be to change the output bus. It's set to master audio bus. Now we want to change it to group with the ambient sound. So we'll click the dots to the right. And then underneath master audio bus, we'll find the AMB and click OK. That's it for the sound properties. The last thing we want to change on the file itself is in the RTPC tab that stands for real-time parameter controls. We're going to want to add one. So down at the bottom of this pane, go ahead and click the double arrows, select voice volume. We'll then select the double arrows to the right of voice volume, expand game parameters, and we'll choose the AMP fade that ships with the samples project. What that'll do, as you can see in the graph here, is fade up from 0 to 1, essentially full volume. And we'll tack that on to the shapes that we'll use later to kind of fade the volume in as you get closer to the source. So our clip and its controls are now set up. We need to add a couple of events. So we'll click the Events tab up in the top left pane. We'll come down to Samples Project, we'll right click, and we'll select New Child. First, we're going to want a play child. So we'll name this play test trigger. We'll leave it alone for now and we'll add another one. So right click samples project again, new child, expand stop, and we'll need a stop trigger. We'll name this one stop test trigger. Now that we've got those triggers, let's set them up. Find your play test trigger in the Project Explorer, click it, 
And you'll see objects in the event editor says missing. So let's right click that. We'll click browse. And then we'll find our audio file. Mine's down here at the bottom. So I'll click it and I'll click OK. Then in the stop test trigger, you'll see it's also missing. So let's do the same thing. Right click, click browse, find our item and click OK. So now we've got our audio imported. We've got two new events set up. The last things we need to do are export this stuff so that Lumberyard can pick it up. That's a two-stage process. The first is we're going to click up in the top left corner, this Generate Sound Bank button. You'll see it do its thing. You'll get results. And then when it's finished, go ahead and click Close. And then we'll come up to the menu bar, click Project, and we will click Save. So that's it for WYs. I know it doesn't seem that complicated, but when you have no idea what you're doing, it can take a little bit of work to figure out where you need to add things, what you need to add to see in Lumberyard. So it really boils down to importing your audio clip and creating the triggers that you're gonna need to work with. Now that that's done, we can move on to Lumberyard and get to work with adding that stuff to our level. That'll be in the follow-up video that I'll put out later today. Um, so thanks for watching. Questions, concerns, throw them in the comments below. If you have any requests for other videos, drop them down there as well.